Hi, in this tutorial we will continue solving the exercises from uh, this uh, page. We had 12 exercises, we already solved 6. So let's go with number 7. So now, number 7, we want to see what will be the result of doing a Cartesian product between uh, relation takes and relation courses. Then, we will need relation takes. So we'll copy that right here to illustrate the Cartesian product. I want that over here. So it will be takes Cartesian product with courses. Okay, so then what we're doing is each element of takes will be uh, joined with each of the elements from table courses. So table courses has three elements or three tuples. So and this is two. So that means we're doing two times three. That will be six tuples. So then let's see. We can copy this table at least the first two elements and see if that works we will copy that right here okay see that is okay so we got that CID title now lost the color which is not important let's see if I can do that Okay, so then I need that uh, six times, so I need some space here. Okay, so that would give me three, four, five, two, four. No, I'm sorry, I have the ones that I need. Okay, so now let's see. So we got this is this is the elements. So now let's go and see. So this element needs to be joined with this element, and let's do the following. Let's move this over here. So this will be here, and here, here. Why? Because we're going to do it three times, and then this, we need that three times two, control C. We're going to copy that right here. Here. So I need that three times. Why? Because we've got three elements in the other table. So it's going to be joined with, uh, let's get the three elements from courses. So this tuple goes here with the three elements there and also goes here there so we got the end and this is the answer of the Cartesian problem so this is the one that we consider to be the most expensive operator for uh, the relational algebra because let's suppose that we have a table of students for a university that says there are five thousand students and then if we join that for example with a table that is this small three then the resulting relation will be three times five thousand, fifteen thousand. So now we got, I don't know, more than three courses, one hundred courses, and we do the Cartesian problem with the students. Then you can see how big and all the memory and resources that we will need to compute and display that that answer. So that's what we call this very expensive, and we need to do other operators actually before we were solving queries that involve this this type of operation. Okay, number eight, I see that I have the answer, and that wasn't the idea. So here is a, it's a yes or no answer, and unfortunately you saw the answer there. So it takes times courses, the same as courses time, times takes. So um, the answer is no, because remember that this is a set of tuples, so if we change the order, 
and we do courses further and it takes, then that means the last four columns will be the first and the first two columns will be the last two columns in the table and that will change the order in the sequence. And by the way, we can see that in the relation text, there are two attributes that have the same name. So the way that we avoid that is that actually the first CID comes from text. So the actual full name of that attribute is text.quote, the CID. And this comes from uh, courses. So this is courses.cid. So we do that and we put that this is the actual full name of the attribute. We, we need to make the distinction. We don't need to do that for title, credits, DID, and SID. So here the answer is put the answer again, which is a no. And let's start to this. Okay, so now for the next question, question number nine, list the student SID and title of the, uh, the title of each course that the student currently takes. So let's see. Takes. We have only two students taking courses. So one, two, three is John, and he's taking 99, and 99 is algebra. Two, four, six is the other John, and the other John is taking 55, which is database. So what we want to see is the name of the student, which will be John, no, the SID of the student, and the title. So it will be then in my answer, what I expect to see is the one, two, three takes uh, 99, which is algebra and two, four, six database. So then I have something that involves two tables. So then I will have to do a, a Cartesian problem between students and takes. And then in the Cartesian problem that we see, we got like for example here we we do each element of one table with the other what an element from the other table right so what we need to do is add a condition in which the attributes that they have in common which in this case will be the sid when this sid is the same as this id that's what we want to see it and then in that case we uh want to see the name, and then the CID here is also equal to the CID here, and then we want to see the name. So then what we need to do is a Cartesian problem with the student and text. So that's what we need to do. And then once we do the Cartesian problem, we will do a selection. So then let's copy then here, this, and then let's put here some space for the answer. And then it says, okay, the relation is the relation that results from doing a student's Cartesian product with takes. And actually, we need also courses because takes doesn't have the title and we need the title, right? And then courses. So let's double check. So we're doing a student takes and courses right and then the sigma will be the condition which in this case will be that the students that CID in one table equals to takes that SID and my other condition will be the takes that CID equals to courses dot cid so you need to visualize the huge um cartesian problem and the answer that comes by doing the student takes in courses but remember we want that students who are taking so that's what we do in this condition and then here that once we got find all the students we want that takes that the cid from that matches the cid from here now from here we also need we only need the SID and the title so we need a pi I don't know if we're gonna have enough room to do the pi let's copy the pi from here control C looks like we no we don't well so, so here we need SID SID 
and tie. Right, you just got enough space for that. Okay, and this will be the answer for question number nine. Now let's see question 10, 11, and 12. I may need to pause again because it's already 10 minutes on this tutorial. So I guess I will pause and do that in the third and last tutorial to answer question 10, 11, and 12. Thank you.